It's, to me, the most important thing is to stay ahead on points. Well, they didn't put Whitaker in with a noted knockout puncher. Even though Brazier has 54 knockouts in his 78 wins, he is not regarded as a one-punch knockout type and not regarded as the kind of guy who could be a short-range danger to Brunel Whitaker. He'd have to pile up a lot of punishment on Brunel to knock him out. But I think if Brunel Whitaker reaching out, trying to land hard shots, can run into a good straight right. He'll be getting off the canvas if he's not careful. First time I've ever heard manager tell a fighter <laughs> early in the fight you're behind 2-0 he's trying to rouse his fighter into a more offensive fight trying to tell him to go out and get some more points still here this could be a great mistake by Whitaker throwing away his power in earlier rounds against a bigger guy Brazier has big legs big thighs well, one thing Brunel Whitaker wanted to do here was to be busy early and not to allow Brazier to get brave. So far, Brunel has been throwing 100 punches per round. That's a high volume, and it's aimed at keeping Harold Brazier back on his heels in a defensive posture. Left hand lands over the top for Whitaker, and look at all the leather he's trying to throw inside. Keep him loose, man. Whitaker's starting to foul forward even now. And weight different. It's already starting to show a bit. Good body punch by Pernell Whitaker. Whitaker throwing four or five punches to every one from Brazier. Let him go, let him go. Remains to be seen if Pernell can keep up the pace, fighting at a higher weight than before. And when you throw those punches at a higher weight, it's like wind sprinting. Sure you do it, but afterwards you have to win from them. We should point out, this isn't the first time that Purnell has ever been in the ring at 140 pounds. He has actually fought at this weight before, but he was an overweight lightweight when he did that. This is the first time he's been there meaning to stay at this weight. It was said earlier, today could be the first day of the rest of his life. Razor's starting to find some business coming up and under. He landed two uppercuts. And another one to the body. Whitaker allows Brazier to get some courage. Let him go, Pete. Let him go. Now, you saw Brazier get his leg outside of Whitaker's <laughs> there, pin Purnell inside, and hit him twice to the body. Again, whichever fighter is able to keep his foot to the outside of the other has the advantage in these exchanges. <laughs> Solid left hand and right hand from Purnell Whitaker. As I said earlier, it's like running wind sprints. It takes so much out of you at that weight. You're watching the continued evolution of Brunel Whitaker from one-time will-o'-the-wisp <laughs> to dangerous, aggressive body punch. Three or four rounds, Whitaker's going to realize, hey, this is not going to be a... Walk, cake walk. He's going to get in and fight this guy. Brunel just cut loose and tried to flatten Harold Brazier with a left hand. Wasn't able to catch him slug. There's a right hand by Brazier. And a oh. and ah. Earlier, Brazier kept his feet apart. He kept Pernell Whitaker off balance. If he continues to do that, do that, things can happen. But if he closes those legs up, Whitaker is going to go off with several combinations. Uppercut landed for Whitaker and excited the crowd. Be cool, please. Be cool. Brazier's trying to make Whitaker commit for a hard shot. But at the same time, he's getting him with short, snappy shots. Brazier hasn't lost a fight. Seeing here tonight is virtual perfection and no drama. And that's what the matchmaker was concerned about. Woodick has taken a hard fight, a dangerous fight, and made it look easy. Really has. And the only drama is developing in Brazier's corner, where you heard manager Pete Susan say to his fighter, you are waiting yourself right out of the fight. He wants Brazier to open up and take a few more chances. That's much easier said than done, isn't it, George? I can tell you this. It's a shutout. 
Whitaker, for the first couple of rounds, was kind of hesitant. He was afraid, but now it's like, hey, I own this ring. Trouble with opening up and taking chances against a guy like Brunel is that he's so quick, counters so effectively, and is so accurate with his punches. He makes you pay every time. It should have been a point early on, but he's been hit with so many good body punches around to the side, that his punches will be ineffective from this point on. Meaning great. Gracious punches would be ineffective at this point. Too many body punches. I think we may be getting close to a possible TKO. There are moments here when Brazier is just not trading back and taking a lot of punish. Whitaker is so mean that sometimes he doesn't even try to get a knockout. He'll just okay, beat you okay. up for a few. Not only Whitaker wants Chavez. Chavez, and he wants to get out there and show everybody, not only am I tough in the lighter weights, I can move up, I've got punching power. Of course, a lot of people want to get at Julio Cesar Chavez, and that too is easier said than done. Chavez, for the moment, controlled by promoter Don King, has not been in the ring with either Meldrick Taylor, or any of his other primary adversaries at 140 pounds since the spring of 1990. Whitaker's put on a great exhibition. Of All right, stop punches. punching both of you. Chavez could be passing up a great career. But Brunel is just having a field day here in round number seven. His best round so far, a nightmare for Harold Brazier, who trades back little, if at all. <laughs> he just didn't expect Whitaker to have that much power. Now. Ah, come on, come on, keep it straight, babe. Eh? Keep it straight, man. That's an old Purnell trick, grabbing his opponent around the waist and throwing him off balance. That's what I want. I Appetino know it doesn't want to let him get away with it. Of course, the referees know Purnell, and they know what he's likely to do. At this time, Purnell Whitaker better be a little more careful because he is not the master of the 10th, 11th, and 12th round. This fight scheduled for 10 rounds only. Brunel's lightweight title's not on the line. And of course, so far, he doesn't look like he's in danger of losing anything. Frazier is doubling over in pain. The body punching has done its deed. To know that this is a guy who can come in and throw punches, all of them with spirited intentions for 36 straight minutes. Could be a message to the boxing world in general. Hey, you pay all these big heavyweights all that money. Look at me. I'm much better. Look at me. Just look at me. That statement he's trying to make. Or middleweights. Maybe you want a six, seven, eight million dollar purse. Well, of course, we've been giving the public a chance to look at Pernell Whitaker here on HBO for three and a half years. And what they've seen is the increasing maturation of a young man who's always been regarded as a great fighter but is now being seen as a different one than was the case a year ago. He's having a field day, and this is a great, good boxer he's fighting. Now, one round to go. Whitaker starting to show his footwork. Brazier's going after the guy, but occasionally it's like running into a bolt of lightning. That's the viciousness I told you. Well, except he didn't step in and whack him when uh, Brazier was standing still there and seemingly defenseless. I think Purnell looks as though he's getting a little bored with this. And so he's playing around, and I'm sure that Benton and Duval will tell him sometime after the fight that that wasn't the world's best idea. 